All aboard for the transcribed premiere production, The Cruise of the Paul Parrot, that thrilling story of whaling days at sea. When we last heard from our friends Johnny and Sue aboard the Paul Parrot, they had just discovered Altesti, the mysterious Spaniard who had been so elusive in the hold of the ship. And of all things, talking to Red Mulhooly, the mutinous sailor, who was put in chains for attacking Captain Dalton in his cabin. Johnny and Sue are still in the hold, hidden from Altesti's and Red's view by whale oil cast. They are trying to hear the conversation between the Spaniard and Mulhooly without being detected. Meanwhile, on deck, old Dickon, with Paul Parrot perched on his shoulder, is waiting at the hatch for the return of Johnny and Sue with whatever information they are able to discover. While just up the deck a bit, Captain Dalton is talking to his first mate, Wainwright. Well, matey, I believe that with putting that red-headed Mulhooly in chains below, a lot of our trouble is over. Right you are, Roy. And I'll lay to that. Oh, he's a bad one, that red. Bad is no name for the lubber. And landlubber he'll be as soon as we reach Rio. And if I've got anything to do about it, he'll remain a landlubber. For I'm going to warn every skipper and every officer I know again him. You know, matey, the more I ponder over it, the more I think that perhaps Red is the one who threw that belaying pin that capsized old man Breckenridge before we set sail. Why? What reason could he have had for a thing like that? Well, for one thing, I'm firmly convinced that in everything that has happened so far, Al Testi has been the instigator. But what is that Now, to wait, do? wait till I finish. You see, if Al Testi was so intent upon getting something and not knowing whether it was on my person or perhaps on board ship, what would keep him from getting this red to sign up for the cruise so he could have some help on board if he needed it? Sounds likely enough. But why did Red wait to start trouble until after you knocked him down in defense of the lad Johnny? Did it ever occur to you that maybe he started to abuse the boy, knowing full well that I'd do something about it? Then he would have some reason, well, even to start mutiny aboard. That then would be the ideal time for El Testi to get in his dirty work. If that's the case, then I'm in favor of having the swab tried for mutiny and let him swing for it. No, George. As I've said before, I'll have none of the man's blood on my head. And he's harmless enough where he is. Well, I'm not so sure about that, Roy Dalton. A tiger is never safe, even though he may be in a cage, until he's stuffed. Perhaps. But I don't intend to be the one who stuffs him. Well, how does the crew strike you as whalemen, since we put them through the drills? Uh, a set of men I'm proud to be first mate over. And you may lay to that. Mm -hmm. And to think you almost didn't sign up to come with us. Aye. But I'm still of the mind that this cruise is for something else besides Wayland. And I agree with you, Wainwright. I know there is more that Mr. Grange could tell us if he wanted to. Oh, by the way, where's the lad Johnny? If you see him, send him to my cabin. I have some things for him to do. Aye, aye, Captain Dalton. Oh, there's Dickon down the deck a bit. I'll ask him if he's seen the boy. Shh. Sue, we can't leave now. I'll test he might hear us. Just keep quiet and maybe we'll hear him and Red talk again. Yes, be still. I think they're talking now. Shh. But blow me down, Mr. Altesti. I can guarantee to start a mutiny on this ship if you'll get these chains off me. I bet I am not sure, my friend. At first, I think perhaps the red-haired man can help me. Then again, perhaps he may be in the way. You had a good chance to get this dog, Dalton, as you say, the other night. But no, he catch you instead. However, I will think it over. If I need you, I know where you are. But well, listen to me. If you don't loosen these chains, maybe when old man Dickon comes down with my grub, I'll tell him where you're hiding. Then the jig would be up with you, too. My friend, I think that was unwise for you to say. Perhaps when Dickon arrives with food for you, he finds you are not capable to eat it. Why? Because I carry very sharp blade in my knife. No, no Mr. Altesti. I, I didn't mean I'd snitch on you. I, honest, I didn't. I was just trying to... Well, I... You see, my friend, it would be unwise for me to rely upon you for help. Your hair, it is red, my friend. But the rest of you, I'm afraid, is another color. Yellow, maybe. Well, well don't worry. I won't tell where you're hiding. I am not afraid of that, my friend. However, if I did not believe you... There would not be time for you to give me away. But I think I know how I will gain my end. And very soon, I think I know. John, did you hear what he was talking about? Yes, but I don't know exactly what he means. 
Look, Sue. Altesti is leaving Red. Yes, and he's going toward that secret panel in the ship's side. As soon as he goes through it, we'll run up and tell Captain Dalton. Shh. Now he's inside the panel. Yes. And now the panel is closing behind him. Look. It's completely closed. And it's almost impossible to tell where it is after it's shut. But how will we find it again after we get Captain Dalton? Come on with me and I'll show you. But wait, Johnny. You're not going out there where Red is. Why, he'll see you. What if he does? He can't harm us. He's all chained up. I'm going over and fix that spot where the secret door is. And then we'll go above where Dickon is waiting for us. A boss there, Mr. Wainwright. Be you looking for old Dickon? No, Dickon. But I'm looking for Johnny. The captain wants him. Have you been seeing the lad? Aye, I have that, sir. The boy and Miss Sue are below trying to find out uh, what they can find out. Trying to find out what? Trying to find out where old Testy is hiding himself. <laughs> so you think old Testy is still aboard, huh? Why, man, we've searched from stem to stern and there's no trace of the worm. Aye, maybe so. But as I've said before, old Paul Parrot here is a sight older than any of us. And when he says Altesti is aboard, you can bet your sea chest he is aboard. Dickon, you've become a bit touched, I do believe. What kind of talk is that? Paul Parrot told you so? <laughs> we'll laugh if you must, Mr. Wainwright. But hold, here comes Miss Sue and the lad coming up the companionway now. Quick, Dickon, hurry. We've seen Altesti. What? Yes, Mr. Wainwright. We just saw him talking to the sailor you put in chains. Are you sure? Aye, aye, sir. Hurry and we'll show you where he went to. Aye, what did I tell you, sir? Ah, ah, down the hatch, down the hatch. Ah. Down the hatch it is, then. Come on, Dickon. Johnny, you and Miss Grange stay here. There may be danger below. But, Mr. Wainwright, if I stayed here, how would you know where to find out Testy? Where's Captain Dalton? We should tell him. There's no time to tell Captain Dalton now. Well, uh, come along, then, Johnny. Perhaps you'd better go with us to show us where the lubber went to. Hurry up. Down this way. But how in the world did you ever come to find him? Well, we knew he must be on board somewhere, for Dickon had left the parrot down below with Red Mulhooly. Then when he brought him back on deck, the parrot kept yelling, You can lay to that, Mr. Altesti. I'm with you. That he did, Mr. Wainwright. It's the truth. He's a broken hammer and shark, and you can lay to that. You see, Mr. Wainwright? So Johnny and I came below and hid behind those casks over there. And while we were hiding behind them, we saw Altesti talking to Red Mulhooly. What were they talking about? Well, we couldn't hear very well at first. They were talking so low. Then we looked up, and right behind our testy, we saw an opening in the ship's side. Yes, sir. A kind of a door. It's closed now, but we were afraid we couldn't find it again. For when it's closed, you can't see it. So I went over and smeared some tar on the spot where it was. Yeah, I, I see the smear you made. Now, come on, I'll talk with Red. Maybe he'll tell us what our testy was talking to him about. Hey, Red, you weak spine jellyfish. What's all this about old Testy talking to you? I don't know what you're talking about. He won't tell, Mr. Wainwright, because old Testy threatened to kill him if he said anything. Well, we'll take care of Red later. First, we've got to get through this secret door somehow. Hmm, I can see where this might be a door, but how does it open? I'd hate to have to break it down. That'd warn old Testy, and if he knew about this secret panel, he no doubt knows of others on board. We'll have to surprise him. How? There must be a spring that opens this door. Uh, uh, Norba nor east, matey. Norba nor east. Uh. Norba nor east, huh? That'd be the right side up. Hmm, I can't feel anything. I wonder. Uh, uh, a bass there, matey. Heave to, heave to. Uh. Maybe the battle's right again, Mr. Wainwright. Heave to. He may be at that. Here, I'll put all my weight on this end and push. Uh. Wait a minute. Look. It's opening. All you have to do is give it a start. Aye, and she opens by herself. Come on, Dickon. We'll go in first. Johnny, you and Miss Grange can follow. But easy now. It's kind of dark. I'll have to feel my way. Careful, Mr. Wainwright. The level may be waiting for you with a knife. I uh, hardly think so. There's just room in this secret way for one person at a time. And there's no one here now. Perhaps he heard us. Maybe, but we'll find him. Come on. Take it easy. Here are some steps. Say, Dickon, what would be just above these steps and just below the deck? You know this ship better than I do. Aye, that I do. Well, I'd say the cabins are just above Mr. Granger's and Captain Dalton's. Well, come on. Follow me up these stairs. Look up ahead, Mr. Wainwright. 
Is that a light? Light it is, lad. And what's this? Hmm, boards. Well, this passageway was boarded up. And look, these boards have just recently been broken away. Aye, and stout boards they are, sir. It would take a long while to lock them away from this passageway, sir. That accounts for it, Dickon. Accounts for what, sir? For the scraping sounds we've all been hearing the past few nights. The Spaniard had to be quiet as possible, and it took him a long while to break the boards away on that account. But where does this passage lead to? Yes, if it leads to one of the Come cabins. On. We'll soon find out. If what you say is true, Dickon, then that light we see through that crack ahead is either coming from Captain Dalton's cabin or Mr. Granger's. Why, look. It must be another secret panel leading into one of the cabins. Let me peek through, Mr. Wainwright. Oh, it's our cabin. Shh, it's not very light in there, but I can see two people. They're talking. Wait, they're going to light the lamp on the table. Can you see who it is, Sue? Shh, wait a minute. Now the lamp's lit. Oh. What's the matter? Who is it? Oh, it's Altesti, all right, and... Who's he talking to? Altesti is talking to my brother. Well, now we have solved one mystery and run right into another. Altesti is definitely aboard, and we have found that it is he who caused the chopping noise, and we know, too, how he did it. But why is he talking to Mr. Grange? What have these two men in common? What does this meeting have to do with the many strange things that Ezra Grange has done during this voyage? To find out, be sure not to miss even one of these exciting adventures on the cruise of the Paul Parrot. Your Paul Parrot announcer is Dave Ward.